Beginning with the release of version 16.20, Powerline Systems is pleased to announce a new product collection called PLS Distribution Lite. The PLS Distribution Lite collection comes with the PLS CAD Lite program and the PLS Pole program with the wood pole design module. With this combination, you can build wood pole structures and then analyze a single structure using PLS CAD Lite to model the wires attached to the structure and calculate the loads. And along with this package, we have added the ability to export your models to KMZ or KML files for easy integration with Google Earth and other GIS database systems. And coupled with a very attractive price point, makes the PLS Distribution Light Collection a must-have for distribution engineers wanting to perform quick single structure analyses. For more information on modeling and analyzing an entire distribution line in one model, please check out our website for the full PLS Distribution Program or the full PLS suite of programs by clicking on the links in the description below. Let's now take a look at PLS Distribution Lite in more detail and walk through an example project to see just how quick and easy it is to use. First, let's begin by identifying the structure we want to analyze in Google Earth. We're going to look at modeling and analyzing a typical three-phase tangent distribution pole. And we can look at this in the street view in Google Earth and get an idea for what we have going on. Well, from a quick site visit to this structure, we were able to take pictures of the structure and spans as well as the birthmark on the pole so that we know it's a 45-foot Class 4 Douglas fir pole. And the pictures show us that it's a typical three-phase distribution structure with a drop neutral and a communication wire attachment further down. We also took measurements in the field of the span lengths using a simple rangefinder and determined the span lengths to be about 100 feet to the northwest and 157 feet to the southeast. The terrain is fairly close to flat and the adjacent poles were of the same height and framing, so we'll assume no vertical projection of the wire. We also determined that the three-phase conductor wires were 4 aught Penguin ACSR and the neutral is a 1 aught Raven ACSR. The communication cable we discovered was a quarter inch EHS steel messenger cable supporting a 2 inch diameter 1.4 pound per foot communication cable. And from Google Earth, we know that the locations of the pole are 43 degrees, 5 minutes, 17 seconds north, and 89 degrees, 29 minutes, 16 seconds west, and at about 910 feet in elevation. With all this information, we now have everything we need to build a PLS distribution light project and analyze this single structure. To begin, we are going to launch the PLS pole program and we'll first need to load in some library files for things like the pole and frame sets by going to File Preferences. Here I will need to select the Wood Pole Properties file for things like the height and diameters of the poles, and I'll click this button here to go out to our website and grab the latest Douglas Fir ANSI library. Then I'll do the same thing for the Wood Pole Material library which has the flexibility and strength properties for the different Wood Pole species, and I'll pick the latest ANSI library there. And lastly, I'll need to pick a framing library, and we have a library that's been custom tailored to distribution engineers that utilizes the RUS standards. And if you're not familiar with the RUS standard bulletins for distribution structures, check out the links in the description below. Okay, so after we load in these libraries, we are ready to build the structure. I'll start by going to File, New, Framing Wizard. This brings up the Framing Manager dialog where I can browse through all of the different distribution frame sets we have pre-modeled. In the drop-down search box here, I'll pare the list down to three-phase assemblies, and right there is the frame set I'm looking for, three-phase with a drop neutral. I could, if I wanted to, though, pare the list down even further to just the tangent three-phase frame sets. You can see there's several variations of some of the frame sets for things like pin top insulators versus post, options for no neutral or a neutral spool or standoff bracket, etc. I'll pick the standard VC 1.11 and click OK. Now I choose the pole height and class, which we know from the field visit was a 45 foot class 4 Doug fir, and we click OK. Now before we add in the communication wire attachment, let's first bring in some of our photos we took of the structure during our site visit so that we can calibrate them and verify the framing. I'll go to the Drafting Attachments Attachment Manager, then click on the Attach button. I'll first attach the pole tag picture 2850 that shows it's a 45 foot class 4 pole, and I'll attach it to the structure view but shrink its default size down by a factor of 10 and click OK. Now I can zoom in on that picture and verify that it's a 45 foot class 4. I'll also do the same thing for the pole tag picture. 
Next, I'm going to attach the longitudinal view of the structure, picture 2851. I'll leave the defaults alone and click OK. And notice how the picture looks a little funky, and that's because we need to calibrate it to our model. In the interest of time, I'm going to skip past the image rectification process and assume the images were already rectified, which is something certain surveying instruments can provide. Upon inspection of the model with the image in the background, you can see the drop neutral isn't in the right place. It needs to be moved down a bit, but since this is a frame set, we can only move the entire thing, cross arm, braces, etc., as a one whole unit, not just the neutral. So we need to use the geometry framing explode all command to break the frame set down to its individual components. Now we can move the attachment separately from everything else. Well, it's a little tough to see this looking straight ahead at the structure, so I'm going to switch to the view to look at it from the left side by clicking this button. Then I'm going to attach the other photo I took of the side of the structure and rectify it like I did for the other picture. Now we can move the neutral attachment down until it lines up closely with both the photos using the graphical move command. And the last thing the structure needs is to attach a communication attachment, which I can easily do by going to Components Framing Manager. I'll go into the search filter and select communication attachments, and I have either a tangent or dead end connection to choose from, and I'll pick the tangent connection and drag it onto my structure. I may need to use the graphical move command to get it at the right height on the pole based on both pictures. Now my structure is fully modeled and we're ready to attach some wires to it. I'll save the model first and give it a file name. Then I'll click this button here which exports the structure model to a PLS CAD light model where I can add my wires and perform my analysis. Then I need to give my PLS CAD light project a name. Here I get a little setup wizard for my light project, and I'll want to choose a predefined criteria file and go out to our website and pick the appropriate criteria file for my project. So I'll choose the 2017 NESC Heavy Grade C distribution file with the automatic 60 foot extreme wind exemption, then click OK. Then I get the model setup table here, and at the top I have some general information I can fill out. I'll pick one of my structure photos, then for the line notes, I'll enter in the name of the line. For the structure, I'll enter its asset or ID tag or structure number. For the location notes, I'll say this is at the corner of Old Middleton Road and St. Dunstan Drive, and any extra comments if I have any. In the table portion below, I can enter the wire and span information. I can look at these columns for the insulator groups and phase number and correlate them to the preview in the upper right corner, which I can enlarge by clicking on it. The wires I'll need to make some changes to. For insulator group 21, my primary three phase wires, this was going to be the 4 aught ACSR Penguin. So I'll navigate out to the website and download that cable file by clicking on this button. The neutral set number 27 we said was going to be 1 aught ACSR Raven. And I'll navigate to that. The communication wire we said was going to be quarter inch EHS steel but we'll need to modify that slightly for the communication cable that's lashed to the quarter inch messenger. But we'll start by just downloading the quarter inch EHS steel wire. The span azimuths or wire direction, we don't need to make any changes to. The 270 degrees that, that points to the head span and the 90 degrees points to the back span. And with this being a tangent structure, it doesn't need to be changed. We do however need to change our span lengths. The head span we measured to be about 100 feet and the back span was about 157 feet. The only other things that will change here are the display conditions to just a simple 60 degree bare condition for the wire, and we'll color the wires differently so that we can tell them apart a little easier. Now we click OK and we can see our pole in the 3D view and rotate it all around to get a feel for it. It's almost ready to analyze. All we need now is to make the communication cable. To do that, we navigate to Sections, Create Bundled Cable File and we change the bundle type to be a lashed cable. Then we select the messenger wire here, which is the quarter inch steel wire that carries all the tension. Then in the modifier section here, we input the additional diameter, which we said was going to be two inches, and the additional weight of that cable, which we said was 1.4 pounds per foot. Then we add some additional information and notes about the bundled cable file we're making and click the OK button and give it a file name. Now we go back to the line setup table and we change out the communication cable to be the correct bundled cable file we just made.
Now we can analyze the structure just by clicking this check button here. We can see that it's utilized to 89.3% of its allowable capacity. And if we choose the option to run an overview report, we can see a nice looking graphical report that shows us all of our general information at the top, gives us an actual picture of the poll, and a colorized utilization picture next to it. Below that we can see the usage and safety factor for the pole, the most utilized element, which in this case is a cross arm, and the most utilized insulator. Then below that we can see more specific details for each entity of the structure, and also the foundation design forces at the ground line, and so on. And all of these detailed sections can be configured before you generate an overview report. And notice how any element that's more than 75% utilized will be highlighted in yellow. And if there were any that were over 100%, then they would be highlighted in red. You can also now right click on this report or any other report and choose the Save as PDF option to create a nice PDF document of that report. And if you wanted, you could also save it to your project's reference file manager. For more details on the reference manager, check out our other video link in the description below. The last thing to show with this project now is how to create a KMZ export file to view our project in Google Earth. And to do that, we first need to enter the latitude and longitude location of our structure that we got from Google Earth, and define the coordinate system of our project so that the XY coordinates can be calculated. The next thing needed is to set the bearing angle or direction of the structure is pointed at with this field here. By default, this is set so that the 180 to 0 line of the structure's compass points toward the north and south direction. So we need to essentially rotate this structure compass around so that the wires are pointing in the correct direction relative to an actual compass. So if we open up Google Earth, we can use the measurement tool to approximate what that bearing angle of the structure is, and we can see that its heading is about 38 degrees. So now we go back to line setup, and we change that bearing angle to be 38 degrees. And now we can see in the initial 3D view how our spans now appear to be in the northwest and southeast directions. Now we can go to File, Export, KMZ, Google Earth, and save the KMZ file, and then it will automatically open up Google Earth and zoom into our project. Here we can see the structures and wires in 3D view, and we can rotate it around and see how it looks. We can also enter the street view and view the structure as if we were right there at the site. And you can see that the Google Earth Street View isn't entirely accurate, so if you may see some discrepancies between the PLSCAD model and the Google Earth imagery as you move around, but it helps give you a sense that your model is set up correctly. Also in Google Earth, you can now go into the structure locations here and select the pole. And here you can either launch the PLSCAD Lite project or launch the PLS Pole project. And if you wanted, you could collect all of these KMZ files and load them up into Google Earth or your GIS system and essentially build out your entire system one structure at a time and see all the structures simultaneously. We hope that this video helps give you a better insight to the capabilities of the new PLS Distribution Light Package and just how fast and easy it can be to create an accurate and properly geo-referenced single structure model and create KMZ files that you can then easily share with others to view and access your projects in Google Earth or a GIS system. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at powline.com. To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com, and for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.